we back with another hot one. Oh man, it's T Vince and Miss Dean Route 8 Podcast. We here with the legendary. I mean, I know y'all know him because I know him. Everybody know him. Everybody this knows. is a hood. This is a legend. He in all the hood classics. I mean, if you if you want a classic and you want us to watch it, you better get him in it. Hey man, what's up with you? How you doing, man? Tell the people your name. Hey, T Vix, Miss Dean, Miss DeAndre Bonds, and you know, and Thames. But you know, I'm I'm blessed, bro, to be on here and you know to be able to have something to speak about and and, and speak to my people. Man, this shit is beautiful, man. Right. Uh, is. man, you this is a beautiful moment, and we are happy to have you here. So super hey, happy to you. have you here, man. You legendary actor, man. You done played in all the everything. Yeah. I mean, man, I mean, if it's a hit movie, you yeah. in it. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying, it, man. Right now yeah. you're doing uh you doing snowfall. You had the snowfall thing, man. You playing a good part on there, man. We love your character. I mean, man, we got all we got a bunch of questions. I mean, first off, how did you get into acting? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, because most people in the hood, man, we gonna pick up a basketball, football, or we gonna rap or something like that. I, I mean, all how you get into acting? All that, bro. We ain't trying to play no characters. We like we real, we real. Real how life. Did you get into acting? Okay, I'm okay. Second yeah. me, man. I'm talking to the second me. He hollering at me over my shoulder right here. Okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but look, real life, bro. I always wanted to do this shit, man. I used to tell people when I was playing on the basketball courts, running on the football field, like it it wasn't that it wasn't for me. However, I just had I love movies, man. The Goonies, fucking um, uh seeing colors and shit like that growing up it inspired me bro and i was bit at a young age by that acting bug man and um i i wanted to do it you gotta want to do something before you can do it and and i was um blessed and fortunate enough to stick with my dreams man so at like, a young age, life. did you actually did you do any filming or movie uh production or anything at a young age? But you um the closest that I've done was like a school play. Oh, like okay. my like my principal, my teacher, they put together a school play and I wind up being cast in So is that kind of like when you knew it was for you? Like when you was in the school yeah. play and stuff like that? Okay. I swear to God, because after it was over, people came up to me and started giving me money, like twenty dollars, ten dollars. Oh yeah. Like, what the? F Why? Are they <laughs> like, and but it was just because they appreciated the talent and the work. And I was young, man, and that shit made me go hard, man. I ain't gonna lie. I probably would have felt the same way if I had people dropping money on me out of my talents and gifts. You know, that's the hardest thing to get paid in show business. So if you got that out of the way early, yeah. I'm sure everything else kind of fell into play for you. So, I mean, Real let's life. just talk about some of the movies that you've done. I mean, you've done so much in your career. You're, you're still doing so much. So you got Lockdown. We all we all know we love Lockdown. You got The Wood, Get on the Bus, Sunset Parkway, and Three Strikes, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, so <laughs> dope gangster squad. Yeah, yeah. I'm All not that trying to myself, but man, this is up and down. Imperial Dreams, Sunset Park, Three Strikes, you know, and I'm blessed to be a part of all of that. Do people, especially from telling people that I was going to do it, right? And then actually living out your dream, you know. Do do people, come up, stupid, do people come up to you and call you like the character's name that you playing? Like, you know, I'm like, oh, that's 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 Stacy right there. Or that's you know, man. I'm like, man, come on, man. My name is DeAndre. I, I'm getting offended now. If you don't know my name, <laughs> just call me DeAndre. <laughs> I, I, I respect Stacy and the character. And all the attention and love that that has brought me and shared with me, but I, I'm 
I got a real name. My name DeAndre. That's that means more to an actor than anything. If you know their real name, fuck their character name. Why is that? Why does that mean so much as an act uh, to an actor? Because that means they really studying you as a person instead right. of the character you are. They're like, okay, who is this person behind the character? I feel that. So, so you, I know you probably was Stacy for a while, so you probably Scully now. So people run them to you, say, "What's up, Scully?" <laughs> <laughs> you, you hit the uh, the nail on the head, man. On everything I love, bro. Cause, and, and it was prophesied, though. You know, Mister Singleton, rest, rest. Yeah. Um. He said, man, they know you as Stacy now, but they don't know you as Scully. <laughs> <laughs> and you took it, and you took it and ran with it. Hey, 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 you that. Damn That's right. you always do. I have to give you your props on, props on that and your acting skills. You always embody the character that you're playing, the role that you're playing. You kill it every time. So how do you stuff. how do you study for a Scully? Like what what's the work into becoming Scully? You cut the news on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it ain't too much. You got to really act out. You know, mm -hmm. we've been through that. Real yeah. life. Yeah. Scully, like, Scully passionate, though. You know, he lost his lost his seed. And, you know, yeah. he real passionate. He kind of like a loose cannon. But, you know, but he, he very spiritual. You got that. Man, you do a good job embody in that role like that man it it, it feel like that's you you know well, what I mean? you know what bro it, it it's it, it i channel some things you know from experience and i channel things from experience and yeah for the most part man all our people been through all that shit, man we yeah. lost some gain some going through some trying to get something trying to do something and, and and it just it just you know bro it's when you when you experience in real life that type of uh emotions mm -hmm. and it's easy to put to to, to uh, channel it and bring it out bro it's like man scully i ain't acting on that shit. i'm really i'm a scud nigga here though we came back. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We had some difficulties. We yeah. technical difficulties. We back. So the internet cut out on both our ends, I believe. But um we back we on. Yeah, yeah, we, we back on. Yeah, we we good. good now. All right. Yeah. So I would ask, so I, so since we kind of talked about you embodying the character, what role do you feel was like the closest to your actual personality that you've played on the screen? Do you have like a favorite? Is Scully your favorite? Like, is it most relatable? Or Stacy, uh, any of these other characters, you know? <sighs> to be honest, man, I love every character I play, bro. Yeah, yeah, because it, it means something different to me, and it gave me a chance to show case a different aspect of my ability you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's all it's all funny fucking games when it's said and done nigga getting paid to do what he love i ain't yeah. gotta really blow nobody fucking brains out i ain't gotta cut nobody's ears off i don't have to <laughs> go to prison you know what i mean Shit like yeah. that. yeah yeah i, I mean like doing lockdown you know, is it that, that you was in prison shooting that? So, you know what I mean? Like, like, is that like, man, I'm getting paid to be in prison? Bro, yes. <laughs> in, in in one way it is. And in another way, it's another um, avenue to showcase my acting ability. I had some yeah. scenes in lockdown, bro, that was yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never been through that in real life. You know, mm -hmm. like I've never been raped. I ain't never mm -hmm. been in riots or or, or shooting heroin and having mm -hmm. to feel the effects of that shit. Mm -hmm. I never felt that, never done that. I ever once I was Come cast on. for the role, I went Come on, and in the, you know, a lot of like that. And, yeah, and, and pulled from the movies and Blood in, blood out, shit like that, bro. And 
And that's how I did that. So we take it off the Wi-Fi? No, I had just put it on. Oh, okay. My bad. Keep Sorry, can you elaborate a little bit more? Because it cut you off halfway through where you were we were talking about basically like how you were saying lockdown. Yeah, lockdown and how Yeah, you were, yeah, you no, it was it was, it was a, that's one of my favorite movies. Like uh-huh. it's one scene in there that I hate that I did when uh-huh. my character got raped and you know, but at the same time I'm I'm a actor. So if you could make motherfuckers feel that shit. Yeah. And you could pull them emotions out of people. That mean, nigga, you doing what the fuck you supposed to do? That's very true. That and was how did you? That, that was a historic moment it in was. uh in movie. I mean, that's something that nobody would never forget. That scene. It was uh, it felt like it was happening. You know what I yeah. mean? It was it like felt, like you know what I mean? It felt it felt real, and authentic. You know what I mean? So y'all really put that together. I mean. John I mean, Hop, shout out to the director, Mr. John Loves Lesson Hop. Um, you know, he let he let a motherfucker do what he's supposed to do. Or come out, he like, man, he just shot up some hair run and motherfucker that been tormenting you, you, you gonna get it. It's your time. And once he told me that, it don't I don't give it didn't matter no more. Right. I was, you know, it's my time, and I, I shined in that shit, and everybody else did too. So, would you going into that role on lockdown and not wanting to do the scene or not really liking the scene, um, the rape scene? How did you detach yourself? Like, how did you separate that from real life after you did? Because do it? it's fake, <laughs> right? That's it. This shit is that. No, I'm just talking about the mental process for somebody that may struggle with doing my mind. My mind is so powerful. I could make this motherfucking happy award. You know what I mean? Disappear. I know that's right. (laughs) But it's all in your mental. It's like mind over matter. If it's not real, why should it matter? And it's not real. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's my profession. I've been doing this shit all my life. Now I just booked the role to get me up front and, 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 and they wanted me. I didn't have to audition. That's a compliment. That's like it is. Man, you you got motherfuckers it is. want you now. Yeah. It's yeah. an accomplishment. You yeah. right on that. That's you big. Right about and you, that. Uh, in that movie you worked with the legendary artist Master P. How was it like working with him? Because we, we just worked with him on one of our singles, same chick, 10 million views later, man. How was it uh, working with Master P back then? Master P was a straight up business, man. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Motherfuckers was be trying to be late on set and just thinking he was playing, man. He paused the whole show <laughs> filming and told everybody look if you don't want to be here i cut this motherfucker off send your ass home mm. but it's, it's rules to this you got to be on time you got to be ready to work and do your motherfucking part man other than that get the fuck on and i respect p for that you know because i'd have done the same thing yeah. but i ain't had p money so. <laughs> <laughs> and professionalism is very important, man. I feel like professionalism is important in any field of work or any part of the uh entertainment business industry. I mean, you gotta be about your shit, you know, you gotta be professional with it. So yeah, that's what's up. Absolutely key. Yeah, that's key. That's a key, I promise you, and it's probably one of the most important key. People respect you, people appreciate you, people really want to work, they're gonna they're going to dot their um, I's and cross their T's and keep it professional. So what was your first movie that you actually starred in? Tell from the hood. Okay, so that was your first movie. What was that experience like from then to now? Like, how was your first experience on the set growing into being the actor you are today? I couldn't believe that I, I'm really going to be on the the silver screen they call <laughs> now you can go straight to the home screen but mm. i'm talking too much all right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no nah, but everything i love man um that shit was unbelievable like man i'm really at the 
we on the red carpet we with Man Chinese Theater premiere and tell me the hood. And my we in the limo, me, my homies, my mama. I'm taking it. Oh, man, that shit was just unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> I can only uh, imagine. Mr. Uh, 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 rest in peace. Um, Clarence William III played the devil. Yeah. Um, you got um, um, uh, the director, uh, I mean, um, man, you take me back, but, and it's giving me chills because I'm reminiscing on it. My brother, Lamont Bentley, rest in peace, man. We was all there, man, with our families. And we had such a ball, man. Fab Five Freddy was interviewing us and shit. Mm. Y'all yeah, like, was lit. Yeah, Fab Five Freddy, you was lit. Fab Five Freddy. That's that when we was back then, I promise you. I think that was the 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 apex of it, of our generation. And at the Fab Five Freddy, um, you know what I mean? It wasn't no more real shit like that. They lied yeah. about Ray. So for the viewers, where were you born and raised? South Central Los Angeles. Okay. And what was that process like from you? How did you get to the main screen? How did you get to that part? What, I used what to steps did you take in to Hollywood? I used to catch the bus from home from South Central Los Angeles to Hollywood. Well, downtown to Hollywood, go to the 99 cent store, spend like $20 on 20 items uh -huh. and sell them each for five and uh -huh. go up and down Sunset Boulevard. And uh -huh. I met so many different people at that time mm. from, from regular people to stores, Tupac, fucking real life. You know what I mean? Like, mm. And I just was like, and they all tell me, I'm like, I inquire, how do you, how do you get in? How do you, they say, you need an agent, you need an agent. That's all they tell me. And um, one day I met an agent doing that, selling, trying to sell her from candy. What? That's yeah. dope. This sound like destiny to me. Maybe your acting career was kind of like destiny, you know? This, this yeah, sounds like- it, it, it is, all our, um, what we doing is destiny. It ain't, you know, and it's it's no limit on it. Okay. Like shout out to P again. No limit on Shouts it. Shout out to P. What you gonna do real life? Yeah. <laughs> man, how was it meeting Tupac in real life? Ain't too many people can say they met Tupac. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just threw that out there. I mean, like it slid that, even... that was in our notes, but you slid that in there. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> That was yeah. that, that was <laughs> one of the like one of the highlights of my life, and I was only what sixteen back then. Mm -hmm. But Pac was so real. He was at a, we was on Sunset. He was getting a tattoo, and um, it was across from the comedy store. And I remember because I frequent. Every day, that was my route. That's what I went. I went up and down, made my money every day on the same motherfucking block. And I see Pac, man. I'm like, and he had uh, round and round, round we go. Yeah, yeah I get it around. <laughs> yeah, that shit. Yeah, round and round. Number one. Yeah. And uh, I was like, man, hey, I'm selling some candy, man. How you doing? I mean, like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want no candy. Eddie, <laughs> I knew the smell. I didn't know the feeling of it yet, but mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, shit, uh, well, I can rap. <laughs> He's like, I got a rap group. And he had a rap group. He had mm -hmm. the outlaws, I think. And um, I was like, fuck you then. <laughs> Closed my box of candy and got up. He just looked at me and laughed, laughed like that was the best shit he heard. Like <laughs> fucking idiot, not an idiot, but this little nigga, you know. Yeah. And next time I saw him, we were at um, Magic Johnson's theater on Crenshaw at the Baldwin Hill Plaza, and I did a movie called. Uh, Sunset Park and Pot, 
they did the soundtrack for the whole Sunset Park shit. So mm -hmm. you got Death Row all at the fucking hey. Yeah. Movie premiere. What? Uh. And uh, I seen him and I don't think he recognized me from the movie, but he still he he we was having a good time. He gave a nigga love and you know, or maybe he did know it was me. You know what I mean? That's why he opened up like, yeah, let me in. Cause I don't think up. they would let me in. That's what's up. So who's some other artists and stars that you done ran into? Cause you said you were running to a lot of them. What Back and forth on this journey and this path, you hustling down a boulevard, making your money, surviving, grinding. Who else? What were some other stars you ran into? Just thought, you know, just just to give us a little idea of what we're working with here. Well, I've been blessed to work with legendary artists. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was in the rest in peace, Mr. Clarence William III, Ossie Davis. Um Spike Lee. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. You I mean, put me on a spot like this and all listen, the people. Even honestly, there. even if you stop there, we good. Yeah, we got we good. enough. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> hey, if I knew then what I know, I mean like yeah. Isaiah Washington, um Cassius, uh uh Gabriel Cassius. Uh, Federal store for Monix, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I've been blessed yeah. to work with. Like, You've had a blessed a career. Going to people, like, from musicians to poets to artists to, and learn from them as well. Um, but I didn't understand back then what I know now. If I can go back, I would have had a, I'd have been selfied up with them. Mm -hmm. Learning, oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because y'all was in a different, y'all were in a different era, though. You know, y'all yeah, wasn't in know. the internet and take a picture of everything and record and document everything. Y'all yeah. were more in the living in the moment era. Well, you know, that was then. Back then, you was young. You were selling candy. Uh, you know, every day you would take your five dollar, your twenty dollar flip, turn it into a hundred. That's a great hustle, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Great hustle. You got a flip, turn them up fucking about almost 200. You, you, that's, bro. Yeah. That was the <laughs> best hustle in the world. And, and every, I was saving like 750, 800. I was making a week just oh, off yeah. that. Oh, you was cool. You was doing. You was doing all right. Yeah, you was killing them. You was, you was killing. Smart. Them. You went for the bag. You went for the Real bag. Right. Day, day to day, making that money like that, but. You know, growing up and you know, y'all got the gang culture out there. Was you uh you know affiliated with did you get into the gang thing or, or not? Well the gang culture out here gonna try its best to get you. Mm -hmm. And um it tried to get me, however, I had you know my foundation which was my sternness that I'm not, you know, gonna be a gang member. I got my mind set on doing something different. And then my family, they was gang banging. They was from mm -hmm. every gang and you know what I mean? So that helped because if I had issues, yeah. they 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 vouch for me or stand up for me and let them know, you know, this is my um my little relative, my cousin. You know, this is my folks, and they can, if right. you got good shoes with him, you can get it with him. And, you know, I had to, you know, beat a few fools up. <laughs> but yeah, you prove, prove yourself yeah. once or twice. Yeah, huh? you let them know I'm clear, though. Like, I'm not doing what you want me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you got issues with that, this is what I'm standing on. Yeah. And that's what's up. So, What's a what's a day in the life of an actor now that you you on a hit show Snowfall is crazy it's, it's to me it's the best show on TV like I I stay up and watch it I mean so you know that's that's it for me but I mean what's like what is you is you doing a hundred auditions a day or is you reading scripts do you got scripts just coming in all the time like what's a what's a day for you now 
You know, back in the day, you used to get your, you get your, get your 20 pieces of candy, go flip it. Now, what you doing every day? What's your routine I'm, now? I'm flipping this snowfall, man. You know, I'm focused on that. I got other opportunities and um, offers that I've, you know, tapped into and done and others that I don't. And, uh, you know, I'm, I got a movie coming out with Mark Wahlberg. I'm, I got a cameo in Father Stu. Shout out to Mark Wahlberg. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm just staying in my lane, bro. I'm not greedy. I'm not hungry. I'm not doing none of that shit. I'm not, you know, what's for me is already mine. I got a, you know, a clothing line, Grind to be Rich. Um, okay. you, can get that all, you can get that merchandise on guard to and um you know I got a marijuana strain coming out Stacy OG you know you can blow that shit I like that Stacy OG Stacy OG I like that yeah. I got a ring to it I'm just got a ring that's good branding right there that's good branding man got it yeah it's illegal they been we've been trying to sell that shit all our life. Go to jail mm -hmm. for it. Now you can sell it for free. Now they want you to sell it. Yeah. So you it's said what she was go ahead. I'm sorry, not to cut you off. No, right. no, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, so you said you believe what is for you is for you. How hard is it to turn? Have you had to turn down opportunities? Are you able to keep up with the demand? Are there some things that at this point in your career you're like, nah, it's not for me? I've turned down some things that was not for me. You know. <laughs> Is it hard to do when the money, because I mean the money there, so it's you like. You want the money, like, but the, 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 the means to get the money you don't, is not what you represent or your, your, your character or in your morals. You know, they wanted me to be in Weeds, a TV show. And but the character they wanted me to play was getting hit by another dude and his dick get bit off. Mm. Nah, I'm cool. I don't want to play no character <laughs> like that. <laughs> no way. No way. This is DeAndre. I, I'm sorry about that. Now wait. You know, you said part of acting is disconnecting. It's only right that I ask well, look, you. I'm, no, no, we we can only act so much. So, <laughs> so you gotta put you down, your foot down, folks. And you know, I was just out of prison too, so it was like I just did like nine years, seven months. So I was like, you know, I don't want to be played with. Me. Yeah. Just, you yeah. know, like if you respect my abilities, respect my abilities. Don't try to turn me into something you yeah. want. Or create a narrative, create yeah, a narrative that's that false. To do with reality. Yeah. Niggas don't get their dick sucked and bit off in the car. <laughs> 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 me with this. No, no, we don't do that at all, brother. <laughs> no. Even if it's a woman, nigga, no, you're not, you better not bite my shit. You better not have no teeth. If that's yeah, me. no teeth at all. None. Yeah. <laughs> but no, being, yeah, yeah. Being, being, being humorous, but at the same time being real, I had to turn down. A lot of you know things that because it just wasn't for me. I'm you know what I mean, and uh that's just an example. You they, know, uh, you know the one thing that uh that I do as a consumer, you know what I mean, because we artists, but as a consumer, I, I I enjoy movies too. Mm -hmm. So like I take a person like Denzel Washington, <laughs> we'll take a you, we'll take a uh uh Will Smith, like I don't care what the movie about. I watch it because the actor in it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's so. like I'm trusting you to pick good movies so I can yeah. just just use your name to say boom and I'm but and this is what some actors need to that start telling true. these people like this is why I'm turning it down because I mean the consumer is really they 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 want a good movie. They want this type of movie when it comes to me because that's what I do. Like I watch all the movies you in because I know it's gonna be good. You in it, you know what I'm saying? So, and it's like, 
I'm glad that you take your craft that serious because I mean, like, if you'd have did that role, I might have thought, like, I don't know, like, if I could watch every movie he in. Now I gotta watch the trailer. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm bro, saying? So it's like, absolutely, bro. I really appreciate y'all for that because even like, uh, like, like me and her, we can say it on any Denzel movie, any Samuel Jackson movie, any. You kind of know, gonna you know exactly it's, it's gonna be, be good. Gonna I don't be care what it is. Yeah. And, and, I mean, and that's that's the key, bro. Denzel hired me for um a movie, um 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 uh Antoine Fisher. He he personally said you got the part. I was so fucking these people. Oh. I, man, once again, it's an amazing in interview with T Vix and Miss Dean with DeAndre Bonds. Man, I mean, this guy is so busy. I mean, Snowfall is a hit show. I mean, they need this guy on set right now. So, man, hey, man, if y'all want to keep being entertained, you got to let the man do his thing. You know what I mean? So, Hey man, look, y'all make sure y'all go follow him on Instagram, DeAndre Bonds. Yes. You can go follow he him. He has on. a lot of things in the works. Yeah, too. he got from a lot. line to his uh, marijuana, Man, cannabis, his line. cannabis line. So make sure y'all be on the lookout for all that good stuff. He got a lot going on. So y'all make sure y'all get him. Y'all stay entertained. Y'all make sure y'all tap in with uh, Snowfall each and every week. Man, they come in with another hot show. So what you think about DeAndre? Did you Was he everything that you thought he was? Man, the guy is amazing. I think it's an amazing story from a man coming uh, from uh, L.A., uh, catching a bus to Hollywood. Uh, you know, selling candy every day, and, and he parlayed that into a a job in Hollywood. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that's that's really a story for you know anybody can do it. You just got to put the f foot to the ground and do what you got to do. I mean, like I think his story is inspiring. Like for him going through jail and everything else. So yeah. like for all y'all that's throwing out all these excuses, yeah. like oh man, I can't do this. I had to right. go to jail. Or I had to do this. Or this. I got a felony. I got, this dude got one of the greatest jobs in the world, and yeah. he got a felony. Entertaining everyone. Yeah. So and he got a felony. So you gotta look at it like that. You know what I mean? I mean, let his story be. Uh, you know, he in all kind of movies. Let this story be uh, a push for you. I mean, I think guys like this, these type of people that, you know, if you if you down on your luck and you, you know, you, you read their story and you get a picture of them and you look at all the movies they was in and say, look, this is my push. I mean, I can I, I can I can provide for my family off of and this. And I think I'm going to have to agree. Yeah. I got to agree with that. So, and then I heard a little bit of that Stacey accent in his voice. Oh, I was yeah. kind of surprised to see yeah. that he actually had the accent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, <laughs> he had the real man, accent. Yeah, I said, Stacey okay. down pat. And <laughs> the Stacey down pat. <laughs> And you know, and 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 he talked a lot about the lockdown scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? They said, uh, you know, that is acting. So you know what yeah. I mean? It looked so yeah. real. We had to think, yeah. is it real? Yeah. Like, was that real? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, man, it's acting. We he, that good of an actor. And it's funny you know? to hear his growth though, also because he spoke from a point where he took a gig that he didn't necessarily want to do, versus to now where here he's turning down things that don't reflect him in the right. light or show him in the light that he want to be seen in. And I think that's what you got to do, man. You know, sometimes you got to get in there how you can get in there. But then, you know, once you get in there and you, you know, you took care of your family, you did, you got, you got a little saving. You, you, got, got, options. Little you got options. You got options. You know, so, I mean, shouts out to him, man, uh, taking, taking his time out, his busy, you know, just work schedule to even sit down with us, man, you know, so, you know, he, he came, pulled up on our eight podcast. With T-Vix and Miss yeah, T, tap which is your favorite crazy couple. Right. And, you know, we got something in common. You know, we both work with Master P, man. Y'all so both P. work with Master P? We both work. We, well, I can't say both. All of us work with Master yeah, P. Like we and both not like only that, because yeah. well, yeah. we're as a yeah. one, no. right? And both have a clothing brand, clothing, clothing line, brand. Trillionaire, right. available at officialtrillionaire.com if y'all want to get truly up. You know what I'm saying? And in the meantime, y'all can also check out DeAndre's um, clothing line, which, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, y'all have to run it back. Y'all have to run it back. Y'all have to run it back. And he put all the information on there. So. Yeah. So and we'll man, put all the information on here for y'all. Man, too. this, hey, we catching people while they, while they in motion. They in motion, Ms. Dean. We ain't catching nobody that's just sitting on the couch, man. This guy's in motion, man. I mean, boom. And he, I hope this. 
puts you in motion. In motion. Hey, hey, man, this will be the wrap up for Route 8 Podcast, man. It's an amazing episode, man. I might get to share the platform with the beautiful, 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 the queen. You don't got to do that. You don't got to hype me up like that. It ain't about us today. We just want to tell y'all we thank y'all. We love y'all. At this point, make sure y'all like and share. Make sure y'all subscribe. And make sure y'all stay in tune with T-Vix and Ms. Dean. And pull up on Route 8. And pull up on Route 8. We out.